pokea sifa pokea sifa Mungu pokea sifa baba utukufu na sifa ni zako haleluya haleluya oh i know that you have lifted up the name of the lord you have danced you have worshiped it's not about how you feel it is because of who he is haleluya Haleluya apokee sifa kila pahala yeye ni Mungu mtawala wa mbingu na nchi anainua anaponya haleluya anatia nguvu ewe Mungu natia nguvu tunakuheshimu ewe Mungu tunakutukuza ewe Mungu pokea sifa baba pokea sifa oh pokea sifa hapo nyumbani inua mikono yako inua mikono yako inua Mungu inua Mungu haleluya we want to welcome our viewers on Facebook on YouTube on Twitter and on Instagram this is a day that the Lord has made the day of remembrance the day that the Lord has remembered his own people that is why we are singing praises unto him that is why we have the joy of the Lord in our lives because he has remembered us And I want us to start this broadcast with a word of prayer. We thank him because of the opportunity. We thank him because we can praise again. We can worship again. We can raise an altar again. Father, we thank you. We bless you for such a time as this. We come before you, Lord, clothed with joy, with garments of praise, oh God. Father, we are laying aside any other thing that can take our praise, that can take our joy. And my Father, we are giving you everything we are. Everything that we have belongs to you. We bless you Jesus and we honor you in Jesus name. Amen and amen. I will ask the praise team to be seated as for now. I don't know how your week has been. I don't know how your days have been. But I'm reminded in the book of Genesis chapter number 7, the last verse. Verse 24, and the waters prevailed on earth 150 days. But verse number 1 of chapter number 8 of Genesis this is what the Bible says but God remembered Noah hallelujah after 150 days God remembered Noah maybe this is what you have been waiting for you're waiting for that day that the Lord will remember you Noah was remembered after 150 days I don't know how many days that you have had you have been counting days it's now 70 days it's now 60 days but remember the lord will remember you just as he remembered noah and when he remembered noah he said something that is very profound this is what he said after noah built an altar for the lord verse number 21 of chapter number 8 of genesis and when the lord smelled the splicing aroma the lord said in his heart i will never again cause the ground because of man for the intentions of man's heart is evil from his youth there are situations that cause god to speak some words in your life noah and his family plus the animals and everything that was put in the ark their time of remembrance had come and once they built an altar for the lord the lord said that i will never again curse the ground because of man let me tell you you may not have to go through what you have gone through because you have passed the test you are passing the test and let it be unto him a sweet smelling pleasing aroma unto his nostril and because of that altar you are raising god will speak words of favor words of blessing he's already blessed you he will remind you of those words because time of remembrance has come time of remembrance for you has come as a child of god time of remembrance has come for you who has been staying at home maybe you have never left home and you're wondering god how long will it be god will remember you begin to raise an altar of praise begin to raise an altar of thanksgiving begin to give a sacrifice and let me tell you that offering will be like sweet smelling aroma unto the nostrils of our maker and he will speak a word and i know the word he will speak is a word that will keep you going for the rest of your life So I want us today to talk about a topic that maybe is way off what we have been talking about since last week. And I want us to talk about joy. Tell your neighbor at home, joy. The joy of the Lord. 
the joy of the Lord. I know we have been talking about nominal Christianity. And some of you maybe were wondering, oh, pastor, where are we? Where have you taken us? But today I have come to speak about joy because I hear joy. I tell you, the Lord has remembered His church. The Lord has remembered His people. And now it is time for you to be filled with joy. And the kind of joy I'm talking about, it is the joy of the Lord. Hallelujah. Noah had to do what the Lord told him. But time came, his joy was complete. Not all, only complete. Complete. God told him, I will bless you. I will multiply you. That is a kind of a reporter that you are waiting from the Lord. Therefore, begin to put on your praise garments. Begin to bless the name of the Lord. Raise that altar. Begin to worship the Lord and say that joy has come in. You might not see it. You cannot see it with your physical eyes. But I know in my spirit, joy comes and joy has come. The season of the night is gone. And now there is a moment of joy. Hallelujah. I hear joy. I hear the songs of joy. Hallelujah. I hear the songs of joy this morning, this evening, this afternoon. Oh, I know the night cometh, but your morning has come. Hallelujah. Your morning has come. Hallelujah. Thank God for joy. Joy is not happiness. Joy is not happiness. Therefore, you're not going to praise the Lord because of what you can see right now. I know you have not had a physical report, but I know in your spirit, you can hear a new song. You can hear a new report in your spirit. And that is what we have come to talk about today. I pray right here and at home, there will be joy. So I say joy is not happiness. Happiness is related to what happens. But joy is something we can have no matter what is happening on the outside. So then joy is something from within that causes you to see with your spiritual eyes. You see a breakthrough before it is pronounced. You see a miracle before it is manifested. That is what I am talking about. So happiness is a feeling you get when things are going on well. It's based on your circumstances. Happiness and joy, those are two different things. Happiness is based on your circumstances. And in case at this particular time, we'd want to ask how many people have been happy. Very few. Why? The circumstances... The conditions around us have not been good. But let me tell you, that is not why we rejoice. We rejoice because we have a witness. We know where our joy comes from. And our joy is not circumstantial. Our joy resides inside of us and it is permanent. Joy is that deep sense of pleasure, delight, gladness, and well-being that is independent of circumstances. So this kind of joy I'm talking about, it is independent of your loss of job. It is independent of that sickness. It is independent of how you feel. It has nothing to do with how you feel. It has everything to do with what God is saying right now. He's saying, you will be remembered. I have remembered you. Begin to praise. Begin to lift up the name of the Lord. So joy comes from that place of knowing that no matter what happens to us, our heavenly Father is in control of our lives and that we have eternal life. That is the source of our joy. Hebrews chapter number 12, verse number 2. Looking unto Jesus, the founder and the perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him. For the joy that was set before him. Not only after, but before him. Endured the cross. Endured the pain. Endured the blasphemy. Endured the accusations. Endured the whips. Despising the shame. And is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. That is the kind of joy I am talking about. The kind of joy that Jesus had was not circumstantial. He knew I have to die. He knew I have to go through pain. But he had that joy before him. That joy caused him to endure the cross. To endure the pain and the shame that was set before him. And let me tell you. He knew that one day he will be seated at the right hand of the throne of his 
Father. Yes, it is possible to have our joy complete. It is possible to have joy even when we are going through pain. It is possible to have joy even when situations are miserable. It is possible to have joy even when the reports are negative. Habakkuk chapter number 3, verse number 17. Though the fig tree does not bud. Hallelujah. Though there is no harvest and there are no grapes on the vine, though the olive crop fails, though whatever you planted fails and fields produce no food and there is no food that is coming forth, though you planted and there are no yields. Uh -huh. Let's go on and see what the Bible says. Though there are no sheep in the pen, you have consumed everything. Everything is gone. Everything has died. Everything is not producing. There is no reproduction that is going on and no cattle in the stalls. Yet, though the fig tree does not bud, there are no grapes, there are no olive crops and the fields produce no food, no sheep in the pen, no cattle in the stall. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will be joyful in God, my Savior. In God, the Savior and the Redeemer of your life. You are not going to rejoice because of anything else. You are going to rejoice because of the Lord, your Savior. Therefore, listen to me as believers who proclaim and say that the Lord is their Savior. There is a rejoicing that is not dictated by the circumstances, by the things that are happening around. That joy comes from the Lord. So the writer of Habakkuk painted a picture of his things, how they were. But he never allowed those things to dictate the joy because the joy was coming from the Lord, the God of His salvation. Rejoice in the God of your salvation. Are you there and you proclaim that the Lord is your personal Savior, that the Lord is your Savior. Hear me today that there is joy in the Lord, the joy that is not given by anything coming from the outside. It does not mean that things ought to be looking good. Actually, I can tell you things can be very messy. But the Lord requires us to have that joy that can never be taken again. Philippians 4, verse 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Oh, what an encouragement this day that the Lord wants us to rejoice. Not because of what He has done, but because of who He is. Though Paul was in prison in Philippians, he was in prison. He had learned to be content in the Lord. My dear brothers and sisters, I want to tell you something this morning. Let us be content in the Lord. Let us settle in the Lord. If you know that the Lord is on your side, you can be settled. That is reason enough for you to wake up and praise the Lord. That is reason enough for you to delight yourself in the Lord. I pray instead of mourning, let there be oil of gladness over your life. Know that we say that joy is not happiness then what is the source of this joy? Because if this joy is not given by money, if this joy is not given by the things that we see, then what kind of joy and where does it come from? Number one, source of joy. Our joy comes from understanding His character. He's unfailing. He's dependable. He's forever faithful. He's trustworthy. When you see those kinds of words, He's awesome. He is magnificent. He is great. He is wonderful. Oh, He is awesome. That kind of a description can only come from one person and that person is God. Therefore, His character is dependable. In Genesis to Revelation, He remains the same. From January to December, He remains the same. Those are Circumstances change. Our God has a character that is unchanging. Hallelujah. He has a character that is dependable. Oh, I have never seen one that has trusted the Lord and he has been let down. Let me tell you, the circumstances let you down, but your God does not let you down. Therefore, put on that praise comment. Put on a face. Stop mourning and begin to say, Joy come. Joy has come. Joy has come. Begin to sing with me and say joy is here joy is here hallelujah 
you are wondering what's wrong with this preacher woman. <laughs> Ask yourself what has happened. I know God has remembered me. It doesn't have to look like it. I might not have seen it with my physical eyes, but I know in the Noah within me that God has remembered me and you. Therefore, join this preacher woman and begin to praise the Lord. It is okay to be, it is okay to be disorganized. It is okay to let your seat off. It is okay to wake up and switch off that, that television that is making noise and begin to look at the summer and this preacher woman. Join this preacher woman because there is a spirit of joy in this place and in my life. Let me see you dancing. Let me see you at home. I know somebody needs to dance their way to a miracle. Someone needs to dance their way to healing. Hallelujah. Hey, this is a different service altogether. Oh, I was talking about nominal Christianity last week. God has said that one I am dealing with it. I have dealt with it. Now clothe yourself with joy for I am releasing the all of gladness. That is what I have come to receive. That is what I have come to drink. Drink with me. I invite you in this feast of drinking the all of gladness. Hallelujah. There is fire inside here. O Nehemiah, chapter number 8, verse number 10. And he said to them, Go your way, eat the fat and drink sweet wine. Ah, there is somebody who needs to remove their sackcloth right now. <laughs> because you have prayed, you have cried enough. Now, go your way. Eat the fat. Actually, you need the fat because you have lost the fat because of fasting and drink sweet wine and send portions to anyone who has nothing ready. Whatever you have, begin to share. You are sharing and people are asking you, why are you sharing with me? Yet I know you have nothing. It is because you can tell them, I hear the rain of abundance. Oh, coming from heaven. I can hear it from a few miles coming. So you will eat and drink Get to your cupboard. Begin. Ask for the best tea that you could ever get. And begin also to share with somebody. I know that is a sign that you have heard a sound from afar. You don't have to wait for physical manifestation. Go and begin to share. Begin to tell your neighbors. Can you hear? Can you hear the rain of abundance? Can you hear the blessings of God? And they will ask you from where? Tell them I hear in my spirit. And that is why I have come so that we may die together and have the joy of the Lord. This is what he told them. For this day is holy to our Lord. And do not be grieved. Ah, remove that face. Remove that face of grief. Oh, do not be grieved for the joy. <laughs> he stay with me. I want you to say with me at home. You know this one. For the joy of the Lord is your strength. It is that joy. Remove grief out of you and clothe yourself with a face of joy. Let me tell you something. Now we have realized we cannot put our joy in money. We cannot put our joy in our families. We cannot put our joy even in ministry. The joy that we have has only to come from the Lord. When your joy comes from the Lord, then you can stop mourning and begin to rejoice. Things were not right. They were not okay. But Nehemiah assured the people that the joy of the Lord will be your strength. That strength will be needed when the enemies come. But right now, have joy so that you can have strength enough. God is the source of this kind of joy we are talking about. It is the understanding of God's character and nature that our joy is anchored. Our joy is firm. That kind of joy flows from a deep-rooted conviction that God causes all things to work together for the good of those who love Him.
The kind of joy we are talking about is supernatural, can only come from the divine. It is part of the character of God and comes to us only through knowing Jesus Christ. Not because you know Jesus Christ, you ought to have that joy. The minute you received Jesus Christ as your Savior, you received that joy. Therefore, that joy is within you because you know Jesus. Activate that joy right now when you're feeling weak, right now when your report is not favorable right now there is joy that will come from knowing Jesus Christ the joy of the Lord is God joy he has it and he gives it to his people he has it and it is available for you and I just in case the things around you cost you to lack joy God's joy is available for you this very moment for indeed he's a source and that source <laughs> that source is dependable that source is always there so just in case ukona upunguvu run to Jesus run to him he will give it unto you and when he gives it unto you he will not give you that fault he will not give you 60 fold he will give you a full package of his joy. John 15, 11, the Bible says, that is what Jesus wants for those who trust in him, that his joy may be in you and that your joy may be full. This is what he wants. In John 15, 11, he wants you to have a full package. This is a season for us to receive a full package. The devil is a liar. We have been rejoicing over one miracle just before it is settled. He does something and we go down. No, no. God is saying, I am giving you full joy in all seasons. In all seasons, I will give you full joy. Number two source of our joy comes from divine providence. Ah, divine providence. Nothing is outside God's plan. Can I tell you, Whatever you have been going through, what you're going through right now is in God's plan and it will not finish you. He's the absolute divine provider. He is going to provide grace. He's going to provide everything that we need. When we know that there is divine providence, then we can rest assured. So his divine providence providence is a very good source of joy when you are settled in your heart. When Joseph was sold in Egypt, the brothers thought that they would see him no more. Hey, and they knew this is a done deal. He knew that it was a way of his divine providence for the whole family in days to come. God knew. You throw Joseph in the pit. Do whatever you want to do to him. But let me tell you, this will be your source of divine providence in days to come. So that situation will not kill you. That situation will make you stronger and stronger. That situation will usher you into a new level. Hallelujah. God can use a bad situation like this one of Joseph. And now, I want to read Genesis 45, 5 to 8. And now, do not be distressed or angry with yourselves because you sold me here. For God sent me before you to preserve life. Oh. For God sent Joseph before them to preserve their own life. For the famine has been in the land these two years, and there are yet five years in which there will be neither plowing nor harvest. God can use bad situations to fulfill his ultimate plan. He had sent Joseph ahead to preserve the lives of his family save Egypt and set a way for the beginning of the nation of Israel. I tell you, brothers and sisters, count it all joy. My brothers, when you meet trials of various kinds, you know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness. And let steadfastness have its full effect that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing lacking nothing. That situation will bring you to a place where you will lack nothing. If you look at the story of Joseph, he brought his family to Egypt. And when he brought his family to Egypt, he had the wisdom to ensure that they are the people who will be holding on to the livestock. And the people of Egypt will have to depend on them. 
We have to depend on them. And that was the beginning of the nation of Israel. So God knew, I will make you people do something bad. So some situations that look like they are there to kill us, they are not there to kill us. From the pit, Joseph thought he was done. He went to Potiphar's house. God tested his genuineness. He tested his faith. And from Potiphar's house, he went to prison. Let me tell you, Paul was behind bars. James was talking about count it all joy because he had been tried by many things. He had seen the testing. So these are men of God who had gone through much more than we have gone through. Actually, Paul says, I have learned to be content because he had gone through the worst and he had gone through the best. So Paul had known that the way of the Lord, the way of the Lord is one way one way to make you be complete to make you lack nothing in every situation so let me tell you right now in every situation there are levels and there are levels that God has been taking you there are situations from one to the other that is to cause you to consider and tell God I know I have been tried let me tell you for you to know that your faith is legit you have to go through the testing of your faith so Joseph went through the testing of his faith so that he can be placed in a place where he was going to preserve the lives of his family. Maybe that is where you are right now. Someone just told me this morning that now they understand they know what kind of believers they are because they have been pushed to a corner. They have been squeezed to a corner, but they have not let off. They said, God, even if you slay me, I will yet praise you, oh God. So that is what the Lord has been doing in the life of that person. So I want to tell you that this situation that has been facing you, this sickness, ah, hallelujah, or oh, this kind of lack, ah, this kind of misunderstanding, ah, whatever, thing you have been going through let me tell you it is not to push you out it is for a setup so that God can make a way for providence in generations to come some of us will be misplaced will be told to leave one location to another so that the generations that come after you will have a full providence in Jesus name that drama you are going through in your life hey drama comes I don't know how many people have had drama in this particular season Hey, drama has been a lot. If it's not in your family, it is not with your neighbors. If it is not with the mama who gives you mboga, it is with your bank. When you're telling your bank, give me more. And your bank is saying, ah, 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 nothing. <laughs> and you are there and you're wondering, God, I was depending on this ATM to be, give something. I was depending on this Mpesa to give something. But no, it has not given anything. And the landlord, I can hear the landlord knock the door. Oh, let me tell you, <laughs> that is a way to the providence of God. His divine providence, it will not finish you. You will be perfect. Your job will be complete and you'll be lacking nothing. The source number three, it is the truth of his word. Jeremiah 15, 16, the Bible says, Your words were found and I ate them. During our daily bites, I talked about eating the word. I asked us that we eat food in moderation, but when it comes to the word of God, we can put a full plate and add more and more. And let me tell you, you will not grow fat physically. The spiritual man will grow bigger and bigger while the flesh, the outer man shrinks because you're allowing God to take over your life. You're allowing his word to occupy every space in your life. Your words... Jeremiah 15, 16. And your words became to me a joy. The words of the Lord can become joy to you and the delight of my heart. For I am called by your name, O Lord God of hosts. So, the word of the Lord, when it's spoken to us, it gives us such joy. Why? Because we know that word is settled. Not only here, but in heaven. Colossians 3, 16, 17. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching, admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. The word of the Lord will cause you to sing psalms, hymns and spiritual songs. 
with thanksgiving in your heart because that word you know is true and that word is dependable. Joseph told his brothers in Genesis 45, 24, I'm reading from NLT. He said to them, do not quarrel about this along the way. When he had blessed them and given them a wagon to go and bring back the father, he told them to go and they had everything. But he called them and he told them, he whispered to them, do not quarrel about this along the way. What was he saying? Don't worry or lose your joy in any way trying to ask yourself, how will Egypt be with famine? How will Egypt be knowing that our great-grandfather, Abraham, was here and it was messy? How will it be? So he told them, don't quarrel. Don't lose your joy. This coming to Egypt has worked for your good. So don't try to reason with a human reasoning. Some things require us. There's understanding that comes from God because how can God tell them to go and settle in Egypt? Yet Egypt is a land that is known for the bad things, but God was telling them to go there. Though he was telling them, I have survived all this. So don't worry about it. It's all good, my brothers. Put on joy. Go home and tell daddy, I am here. Go and rejoice. Don't put him down. He's an old man. Go with joy. Remove that face of surprise. Remove that face that seems so shocked. And clothe yourself with joy and tell daddy, your son is alive and is working for our good because we are going to Egypt. Hallelujah. But I thank God for Jacob. He is a wise man. He decided to call sought the Lord before he went to Egypt and the Lord went with him all the way to Egypt. Let me tell you, joy is the next phase before your miracle. Hallelujah. And that's why Nehemiah said do not be grieved. Remove the face of grief. Remove that face and begin to rejoice in the Lord. This is what Joseph was telling them. Sing along the way. You have enough food. There is no hunger. Go all the way and come back. Carrying the whole of the family, carrying the whole of the tribe and come rejoicing because it has worked for a good. This situation of me coming to Egypt, this situation of you lacking, this situation of you being rejected, this situation of you losing your job, this situation of you losing your baby, let me tell you, it is not good on the outside, but I tell you, it is going to work for your good because God is going to give you a double portion of water you have lost. In his word, he reveals his promises. His constant faithfulness is revealed in his word. He was faithful to Joshua, chapter number one. He told him, no man shall be able to stand before you all of your days. That is the faithfulness of his word. Just as I was with Moses, just as I was with Moses, so I will be with you. That assurance that comes from his word, it is what God wants us to get back there so that our joy can be complete. When you know that God is going to be with you, your joy can be complete. When you know the Lord is saying, be courageous, no man can withstand you, then I know your joy is going to be complete. Oh, Father, I pray, let someone be strong this morning because of the words of Joshua. Let someone be courageous because of these words of Joshua. Hallelujah. Only be strong and be courageous. Such words will cause you to have joy. Such words will cause you to wake up in the morning when you have nothing and tell God, I hear joy. I see joy. I see abundance. I am walking by faith in the name of Jesus Christ. Yes, we can depend on His Word. We can depend entirely on His Word. Why? Your circumstances right now do not tell of the whole story. Oh, the circumstances of Joseph in Potiphar's house could not tell the whole story. Oh, the circumstances of Joseph in the pit, in prison, could not tell the whole story. But the word of the Lord is what tells us the whole story. Hallelujah. Therefore, we can delight in His word. Do not neglect His word. Hallelujah. Psalms 119. 
Verse 111. Your words are my heritage forever. That is an inheritance. The words of God are an inheritance. They can be depended upon now. You can depend upon them tomorrow and even on the days to come. For they are the joy of my heart. The testimonies of the Lord are the heritage. Your heritage forever. For they are the joy of your heart. Let me tell you, there is no better inheritance than that God has assured us in his word. No man can give you the kind of inheritance that God can give you. And finally, the source of our joy comes through answered prayers. Oh, comes through answered prayers. Has God ever answered your prayers? Has God ever answered your neighbor's prayers? Has God ever answered someone's prayer? If you have ever heard someone's prayers being answered, that can become the source of of your joy. John 16, 24. Until now, you have asked nothing in my name. Until now. Ask and you will receive that your joy may be full. Hallelujah. Answered prayers bring such joy. When I am in need, when I am distressed, when I am in anguish, I know there is one thing that I do. I remind the Lord of something he did in my life, of a prayer he answered in my life. And I count to him faithful because of the prayer that he answered. And that becomes the source of my joy. If he answered yesterday, he will answer today. If he answers today, he will answer tomorrow and the days to come. Therefore, if God has ever answered the prayer of any man, whether in the Bible or here or not right now, let me tell you, that can be the source of of your joy because he's saying until now you have asked for nothing in my name he wants you to ask in his name whatever it is and he says ask and you will receive that your joy may be full when we go to God in prayer with an assurance that he will answer us we can get out of the closet with a face full of joy because we know that he will indeed answer we can get out courageous because we know he will answer those prayers because we have asked in his name and we will definitely receive hallelujah you cannot have answered prayers if you don't pray James 4 2 at the end you do not have because you do not ask I need to hear people begin to ask the Lord why are you mourning about that thing and that situation you can go before God and ask in his name Ask him to come through for you and then get to know that because his character is dependable, start making your joy known. Start speaking with psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs because you know that indeed he will answer your prayers. The story of Hannah reminds us of a case of how answered prayers can bring joy. When I was reading this story of Hannah, I remember I couldn't continue because I began to praise the Lord like Hannah did. I began to think of many times when believers, the church has wept, the church has cried. And many other times we have cried and wondered for how long will we do it? But let me tell you, the story of Hannah can be a source of joy to you because God answered Hannah in the best way possible. She was deeply distressed for not bearing any child. Her situation was not because of any man. Her situation was not brought up by a neighbor. Her situation was not even brought up by wrong decisions made by our leaders. Her anguish and her situation was because the Lord himself closed her womb. There are situations that no man can manipulate. There are situations that we find ourselves in, but God's hand is in it. 
God's hand is right there. And let me tell you, Hannah would have decided to stay. But Hannah became persistent in prayer. And she said, God, I have seen you bless my rival Penina. If you can bless her, you can bless me. If you can bless man X, you can bless me, oh God. That is the prayer we need to start making at times. Her pain, anguish, sorrow, and shame was too much. The discouragement was evident. The only thing she could do is prayer. We get to a point where the only thing we can do is prayer. The only thing we can do is prayer. Brethren, do not lose your prayer even when misery hits the door. Even when the worst hits your door, do not lose your prayer. She was mistaken for a drunkard because only her mouth moved and no voice was heard. But she prayed in her heart. You know, this is such a manner of brokenness where the mouth can't speak anymore. Your heart is praying and your mouth just seems to be moving. And actually the priest Eli thought that she was drunk. But it's very important to note in verse number 18 of 1 Samuel that when Eli, the priest, spoke words of favor, Hannah went her way and ate and her face was no longer sad. What made her change her attitude? It is not because the miracle had come. It is not because she had seen anything. No, it is because she had known the way to my miracle is joy. Sadness has to leave your house. Grief has to leave your house. You have been mourning for too long. You need to let go. And I want to speak for people who have lost their loved ones. Let me tell you, we do not mourn like all those who do not know the Lord. A time comes and you say, God, I know your joy can be my strength. Though on the outsider, I am missing this person. Though on the outsider, I love this person. But let me tell you, you can allow the joy of the Lord. God is joy. He is the kind of joy we are talking about. So that joy can make you complete. That joy can lift your sorrows away. Hallelujah. So joy was restored upon Hannah. Though she had no child, but joy was restored. Joy is what you do before your miracle. Joy is what you do before your breakthrough. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Joy is what you do before your next promotion. Do not wait oh, for the promotion to come. Stop grieving. Let it go. Let it go and begin to praise the Lord. Noah raised an altar for God. Then God spoke words of blessing over his life. Now even you, you can raise an altar of praise, of thanksgiving, of gratitude before Oh, your God. And guess what? You will be dancing your way to your breakthrough. You will be dancing your way to your next miracle. Hallelujah. I hear people who are saying, away with the sackcloth. Away with the money. It is time for my joy. It is time for me to receive a new all, receive the all of gladness over you alive. Oh God, may we have dependable people like Ella, priests who speak favor and speak hope, those words of encouragement made Hannah's attitude to be turned around and in verse number 19, look at her actions. She prays, she receives a word from Eli. In verse number 19, this is what she does. The whole family gets up in the morning to worship the Lord. And when they had worshipped the Lord, Hannah came back and they were together with the husband and God came through for her. She conceived a baby named Samuel. Look at the situation. In anguish, in pain, she is praying before God. Eli speaks encouragement and she decides, oh yes, I know I've been this time 
people for so long crying but now I hear favor God has spoken favor therefore let me go and raise an altar of worship together with my family and after that she knew her husband and the two of them got a baby called Samuel that is how breakthroughs come breakthroughs don't come when you're mourning wipe your face put yourself together hallelujah do not blame anyone for your misery and I decided I will go to God and deal with God about my misery she never brought down penina she never talked ill to the husband she decided in the presence of my God there is fullness of joy and at his right hand there are pleasures evermore she knew that very well therefore she decided to stay in the presence of God because in the presence of God there is fullness fullness I did not say half I said fullness of joy hallelujah fullness of joy that is your portion today you can clothe yourself with this kind of joy in case you lost your joy oh Psalm 51 restore the joy of your salvation God is faithful to restore the spirit of joy over your life I know you are a believer. You have the Spirit of God. You walk by the Spirit of God and the fruit of the Holy Spirit. I know joy is a fruit. You ought to have it. This kind of joy that caused Hannah to dance, to worship the Lord. What did she go to do in the temple when she went to worship the Lord? She went to say, God, you are good. Oh, she went to say, God, you are faithful. I thank you for a baby that is coming. I thank you for the miracle that is coming. I have made a covenant with you. Therefore, I have come to assure you that your covenant still stands. She was full of joy. Let me tell you, people that are full of joy, they become worshippers of God. Not because of what He can do, but because of who He is. She was barren, but she worshipped the Lord. She had the joy of the Lord. You too can be barren, but let me tell you, it is time to wipe away your tears and it's time to remove that sad face and begin to dance and begin to tell the Lord yes I know you came through for Moses you came through for Noah you came through oh, for Joshua and now you have come through for Hannah you me too I can rejoice again rejoice and again I say rejoice what has caused that joy not to flow from your heart. Could there be anything that is blocking that joy from flowing into your life? Ask the Lord to help you identify anything that has taken the joy of the Lord away from you. In case you have not depended on His Word, in case you have wavered in His character, He says He's forever faithful. In case that has been changed by circumstances around you. It is time to tell God, God, you are dependable in all your ways. God, I depend on your divine providence because I know there is no situation that will work for my bad. You said all things will work for my good. Yes, you can trust in his word. His word is settled forever in heaven. That is a word that will never change. And now you know that when you ask in his name, ask, he will give it unto you and he will make your joy complete. Father, we thank you. We bless your holy name. We thank you because a time like this, joy is needed in our families. Joy is needed at our workplace. Our joy is needed in church. Make it complete, O oh God. Help us to trust in your very word. Help us, Lord, to trust you in every plan and in every action, knowing that everything will work out for our good. 
Help us to know that Jesus, you are unchangeable God. You are the Alpha and Omega. Nothing can take your place. God, we bless your name. And my Father, I pray, instead of mourning, there will be joy in our nation today, in our churches today, in our homes today, my God. Oh God, instead of arguments and quarrels, God, there will be joy. Father, in that situation, in the home where there is a sickness, there is a threatening situation, God. Lord, in your presence, there is fullness of joy. We have learned from Hannah that we will dwell in your temple. We will come before you in your presence and you will settle everything in your presence. And my God, even before we see it, we receive joy. Even before the miracle comes, we receive joy. We know God, even as we go through the pain and the anguish, we receive joy. Let there be joy in that man's life, in that woman's life, who has lost joy because of the situation that they are going through, oh God. I pray, restore the joy of your salvation. The joy of the Lord shall be their strength. Amen and amen. We thank God for this broadcast today. God supplies grace. And there is grace in every level. Therefore, you can rejoice in Him. And in case you're there and you're listening to me and you're wondering, what are they talking about? What kind of joy is this? This joy is only obtained in God. It is God-given joy. Because we are talking about joy that comes even when you are sick. Even when you are lacking. Even when there is poverty around you. Because this joy will usher you into abundance. Will usher you into healing. Is God kind of joy. And it's for them that have a working relationship with Jesus, that have known Jesus and have known God as the source of joy. You can make this prayer after me so that you can become part of this God's family. You can become part of his family that enjoys this kind of joy. Make this prayer after me. Father, in the name of Jesus, I come before you. I know that you died for me at Calvary. Your blood was shed for me that I may be washed by that blood and become whole. God, I know today you are making me whole in every area of my life. I repent of my sins. I confess with my mouth that you are my Savior. I believe in my heart that you are my Redeemer. And from today, I willingly declare that I am born again. My sins are washed away. I am justified and I will receive the sanctification that comes from the Lord Jesus. And I will also receive the God kind of joy that is complete in my life. I will lack nothing. You will make me perfect. You will make me complete in you. This is a joy I ask for today. May my name be written in the Lamb's Book of Life. And from today, I will declare openly, I am not ashamed that you are my Savior and the Lord over my life. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen and amen. Would like you to continue contacting us and you can reach us through the number that is displayed at the bottom of your screen. You can talk to us on that number. You can also use this, uh, the other platforms. We are on YouTube at LFM Nairobi, Twitter at LFM Nairobi. We are on Facebook at LFM Nairobi Church and we are on Instagram as LFM Nairobi Church. So make that move. Reach unto us. There is a number right now. And tell us what the Lord has been doing. We'd want to celebrate with you. Remember, this is a season of joy. God has remembered us. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. So, see you 
on Tuesday. See you on Wednesday. See you on Thursday. And see you on Saturday. And again on Sunday. It's always a joy to come to you through the social media platforms displayed. And thank you. You have been a blessing. Thank you for supporting us. And let us rejoice in the Lord. And again, we shall rejoice. Amen and amen. God bless you. Nani kama wewe na kuinu wa Mungu wangu leo nani kama wewe na kupenda ni nani Yeah. Bye.